Build today, we are installing these Aerosport products, carbon fiber wingtips. They are awesome. I'm super happy about it. So, first off, Aerosport products, I am not affiliated, not sponsored in any way. You might remember me talking about them during my instrument panel installation, all carbon fiber. Um, they make a ton of products for vans, RVs, and also more and more for, for the, this S21 build. This is the air box that they, they provide. This is 250 US dollars. I was sold on this when I had a friend install his aluminum OEM air box and lost a nut through his engine on it and uh, it needs a new cylinder. It saves a little bit of uh, weight as well. So let's talk about these. In today's dollars, it's uh, the end of 2022, December. I just got on the website, it's 2000 US dollars before shipping. And then it's another $995 if you want the optional landing light. I didn't go that option because I had already cut the hole in the leading edge spar for the RANS optional landing light. Benefit there is you're getting a lot more brightness out of those 10 LED super bright uh, lights. The option for the Aerosport products in the tip of the wing, the benefit there is you're not cutting up your um, structural leading edge spar. It's a little bit dimmer as well. So let's take a look at the uh, position light we've got here. This is an Avio Power Burst NG 3-in-1 light. We've got the red position light and we've got the white tail light and then we've also got the strobe. All right, so that's enough talking. Let's get building. Starting off the process with the Aerosport products wing tips. You just kind of clamp or tape in the rib as best you can, leaving, I guess, you know, an equal gap on all sides. And then also front and back. And then you test fit it with the rib in place. You just tape it up make any adjustments you, know, you need. And then once that's kind of final placed with it clamped or taped in place, then you start match drilling the holes from the inside out. Got the wing tip test fit and just hang it in place with just some masking tape, but it looks really nice. I like the positioning of the rib. I don't think it needs any more adjusting. It's just showing some imperfections in the aluminum, but super minor. Okay. So I think now I take the wing tip off and then I just match drill from the inside, the aluminum rib into the carbon rib. So that's what we'll do now. I guess we'll have to take off those panels. It's kind of hard to see back, you know, to where to drill, right? So, you know, I'll probably put a light in there. I'll probably put a mirror in there. I could even put my phone in there and rebroadcast up on the TV like you've seen me do in the past. but. I think to start, I'm going to walk the other rib over to the wing and mark this rib up with where the holes are, at least so I have an idea of where to start looking for the holes, because there's like 12 holes in the rib, but there's only eight that you need to drill. So we're going to cram ourselves over in that corner and kind of mark up this with a silver Sharpie, and uh, that'll get us going. Man, it is like nine degrees outside, so it is not that much warmer. In, well, it's quite a bit warmer in here, but it's still freaking cold. So I've got these marked up and I'll just hold it up to the other rib. Got all eight spot, spots marked up. I'll just kind of transfer those over to the other rib. And again, that's just, just trying to tell me, hey, where to start looking on the other side. Okay, we're all set up. We got a 19, number 19 drill bit, which is 0.166. And we've got a light. And we've got a mirror, and we can see the hole just by that red wire there. That's the first hole, so we'll ensure our wires are out of the way. And that is this hole right here. Plenty good enough to finish the holes later. That was the only one I got through. So without those special Clecos, I guess and those are the black Clecos maybe that are in between the size 30 and size 11. Anyway, I just used some size eight hardware and tightened everything down so it's nice and secure on there. That's not going anywhere. So the next step is to grab the tip, put it on and start just drilling 
Clico holes that will only be used for the curing of the epoxy phase. All right, so that'll be tricky. You wanna let it start setting up. You wanna pre-lube them in from some Vaseline. And then once the epoxy starts to harden, start taking them out and clean those off. And then once everything's hardened, then you can take some Bondo or some Profil or whatever and just fill those holes. So about 0.7, so about 0.35 over. 0.35 is gonna be how far the middle is. So I'm not gonna scribe, don't worry. I'm gonna put some blue tape and then make marks every about four inches, they say. I'll make sure I have enough Clecos because why do more holes than I have Clecos for? So the next step, I suppose, is to count how many of these number 40 Clecos I've got and just do as many holes as that. And I suppose if I need more holes, I could go size 30, what the hell? Would be 32.5. All right, so for my calculations, the diameter, if you will, is about 130 inches. So divided by, you know, four inches, about 33 Clecos. Let's go see if we have that. 27, definitely 27. Yep, 32 of these, so. I'll either have to reduce the number of holes or what I think I'm gonna do is just drill all 32 of them and then pick some inconspicuous ones to go to size 30 and use my copper clicos for those. Top's done, I suppose you could do it from underneath, but no thanks, I'm gonna flip it over. And just like that, it's on its back, much easier. A few more, oh my gosh, so these, Carbon fiber, when you're drilling it, since this is mostly an aluminum airplane, we're not used to carbon fiber, but it dulls bits so fast. So just changing, changing out bits when I, when I feel like it a couple times already. Okay, drilling complete. I just figured just do the last five here, or size 30. The rest will be size 40. And I think before I sand and clean up and prep for glue, I think a great time is right now to put on the position light. And the reason being is because I'm never gonna have just easy access to the inside of it. Again, it'll be pretty easy, but it'll have a rib um, once we glue it, clearly. So I think that's what I'm gonna work on. And I don't know if I'm gonna reach my goal of getting this glued before I gotta leave for a four day trip over Christmas, but uh, we'll keep working. It's uh, it's 5.30. I've got the nut plates drilled and now I'm just trying to decide if I'm gonna use standard dome-headed 332nd um, rivets or flush rivets. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use the domed. I don't want added complexity. I'm just trying to keep it simple and keep moving. Um, so in that regard, I've sanded the mating surfaces um, and now, and then I've got to just clean it up with some uh, denatured alcohol or whatnot. Um, but before I glue, I want to fit up the position light. So I've got them out. I've just got to figure out what size screws. So I'll bust open the, um, the manual for these. Let's see what I've got. I've got AVO Powerburst NG Daylight, green and red, of course. So. Um, I think they recommended a, a metric size screw, so I gotta figure out what, um, I don't know, what to back it with. Probably just a nut, I suppose. But source the, that and uh, at least drill the holes and get this glued tonight. That's the goal. Got the position light mocked up, holes are drilled. Ready to figure out hardware. Three millimeters for the Power Burst NG, three millimeters. It's pretty close to an eighth, so might be able to work around it and put some Imperial stuff that I already have in. Now, this light came with a Molex connector. So I'm thinking about maybe just filing this a little bit bigger just so that connector can fit through that hole so that I don't have to do the, make the connections inside of this after it's glued, avoiding the, the ribs, the mounting rib and all that stuff. So I think uh, it's not that big, that much bigger. If I just open it up 
kind of oblong, maybe obviously not close to that hole, but, but that way so that this can fit in. Uh, I think that, that that'll be the idea. There also is a gasket just to kind of weatherproof this. So don't forget that when, when taking measurements on hardware. Okay, got it marked and it's pretty darn easy to file carbon fiber I'm finding. That took me less than a minute once I put the camera down. Yeah, number six screw works perfect. So I think that's what I'll go with. The rib is ready for rivets for the nut plates. I'm just using the standard rivets that come with the kit for the plastic kit. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet rivet these with some primer just to minimize the probability between uh, carbon and aluminum interacting. Um, this, and also the steel, I suppose, because the, the uh, nut plates themselves are steel. Okay, I think they turned out pretty well. Let's see if they are nice and aligned when we go to install it, but so far so good. Prepping to glue, I've got the 3M Scotch Weld epoxy adhesive, the 2216 A and B out, and it is seven parts part A to five parts part B. And I figure, well, clearly I need to save half for the other wing tip. Um, and I don't think I need quite that much. So I'm gonna do uh, three quarters of a fluid ounce of part A, and then <clears throat> about half a fluid ounce of part B which equates to a little bit more accurate using milliliters, so 22 and 16. So I'm gonna measure that into Dixie cup. This thing turns off like really quickly, so I gotta be careful, because then it'll, I'll lose the, the weights. And then of course, I'm gonna dip the Clecos in Vaseline. This is 90 minutes at room temperature, so 73 degrees, and um, you get about 90 minutes of work life, so I figured uh, about maybe two hours I'll or maybe 90 minutes, I'll check on the Clicos and uh, start pulling them out. And I'll probably bring this in the house to dry tonight just because it's it'll cure a little bit uh, better and faster if it's, if it's warmer. You can cure this up to 200 degrees F. It's not supposed to be below 60 degrees, so that's that's the only thing I'm trying to fight. And the, you know, the garage gets a little bit chilly, so I'll, I'll cure it in the house. Goes nothing. We get in every day, 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 Getting better, sealed up, airtight, got this on lock. Came from the bottom and now we on top. Yeah. With the go getters and we never stop. I think there's a little void right there, so I'll just probably pack some extra glue in there. Are we getting better every day, a thousand percent, but we getting better. Okay, I hope I didn't screw up. It was super late and the last night, and the, the, the glue was still really tacky, so I didn't pull the pleat goes out last night. Um, clearly I used quite a bit of Vaseline. I did check the Clicos last night and they still seemed fine. So I'm hoping they're not permanently glued in. So let's check. Oh yeah, Pfft. totally fine. We getting better, better. A thousand percent, but we getting better. Come on. A thousand percent, but we get in better. For final installing the wingtip, I'm just finishing off the wiring. So I put the Molex pins on these, I put female on the, air, the ship side, and then male on the, the light side. The one thing I haven't done yet, if ever, if I'll ever do it, is install the aileron and trim the trailing edge. They say they leave it a little bit long, but I don't see myself trimming that. Like, 
trimming it and then recontouring it. Like, mm, no, if it's a little longer than the, the aileron, so be it. I might eat my, eat my words and change my mind, but that's the plan for right now. While I'm in here, I figured I'll terminate the landing lights. And so I'm getting a little bit more familiar with the Molex line. And I wanna talk about something, cause this could be pretty confusing. It was for me. So would you agree this is the male and this is the female? We're talking a little bit of androgyny here, right? Well, the male plug, if you will, has the female pins and the female receptacle has the male pins. At least in the mini fit. This is the Molex mini fit line that I'm working with. Okay, I got the gasket ready. So it is time to install the light. Shave my arms. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All the way. Nuts on the other side and tighten it. We put washers in there too. Let's get this wing tip on the way. Man, it is looking good, but instead of permanently installing it right now, I'm realizing a couple things. Number one is it's pretty difficult to make the connection, the electrical connection for the, the position light and the harness. Um, you know, I could probably do it one-handed, but the lesson learned is make that connection um, and then install it, right? And the other thing is I need to final install this lens. Um, and really all it, that means is it sliding it out, pulling off this protective film, putting it back in and then putting some silicone in, but I need to be able to pull that out. So I'm not gonna finish um, tightening it down all the way, um, but it is fitting amazingly well and it looks awesome. So I do wanna test this light and the harness. Is it on? Oh, that's good. Cool. So let's see. Okay, that wraps up this episode. What's next is I'm gonna work on the fuel tank and then the lift strut. We're gonna swap wings. We're gonna get the right wing up here and lather, rinse, repeat. Everything was the same. The lessons learned on this were, uh, really there was no fussing with straight lines this came out of the box almost ready to go there's just some match drilling and it really was a, a dream comparing it to other people's experiences that i've seen on youtube with the abs plastic wing tips seems to be very hard to get this line perfectly straight and there's there's none of that obviously it's a lot more expensive but you are getting a little bit more performance out of this it has about a 16 to an 18 inch increased trailing edge span, which should help with wake vortices induced drag. So very, very happy with this. Thanks for watching. Until next time, Steve, you're clear. Today.